So what's going on people? This is Shy Harris and today we're doing another video. We ain't doing no pop-ups today. I know y'all like those pop-up videos, but we're not doing that today. Today, I actually want to get into a topic or get into my review or opinion on something that I actually saw recently that I kind of just want to share my thoughts and feelings on. Before we get into that and what that is though, I really want to kind of talk first about my journey as a creative. I first started out real quick as doing marketing for small businesses and actually marketing for music artists. I had a business partner who did all the creative stuff, the photos, the videos, everything, all that, all of that that you could think of that's creative, he did that. So when me and him kind of split ways, I realized that, you know, I want to continue to do this level of work, but I had to start doing it myself because having to pay people for that was always a headache. I started shooting stuff. I started shooting everything I can from events to documentaries, to music videos, to weddings, to short promotional videos and everything else in between. There's a couple of things that I hated doing. And there's a couple of things I loved doing. Like I actually love shooting weddings. A lot of people don't like shooting weddings, but I love shooting weddings. But I hated shooting music videos. I hated shooting events, even though I was pretty good at events. But those just weren't my things that I wanted to be known for. Besides weddings, I love shooting promotional videos for different businesses. Like I get a, a rush out of shooting those. So with that, I wanted to do more. I wanted to do bigger projects. But the people who were paying me always wanted the bare minimum or they wanted something that somebody else was doing. So it didn't really allow me to flex my muscles, flex my creative muscles. So because, you know. I have my arm small right now, so it doesn't really matter. But doing that didn't really allow me to flex my creative muscles. I really couldn't do the things that I really wanted to do because people weren't paying for that. They wanted to, when people pay you, they want to do things exactly how they want it instead of giving you the creative freedom. So things for me didn't really start to blossom until I started creating my own opportunities. I started creating original projects for people and it allowed me to actually do things the way I wanted to do it. And I also wanted to kind of transition back into doing marketing instead of just being known as a creative with always having a camera in my hand. So that takes me to what I'm actually going to talk about today. A couple of weeks ago, a friend of mine, um, Alexander Chambers, shout out to Alex out in uh, Arizona. He sent me a link for a video and the video was called, or it's a short film. And the short film was called and as a creative i feel like we've all heard that phrase 10 million times so that was stood out to me initially like oh i've heard that before let me check this out and actually to keep 100 percent real 100 percent real i didn't even watch it for the first two weeks or so i was like oh okay i'm gonna get to it and then one day i was just sitting in my office i was like let me turn this on real quick and it was something crazy it's a remarkable film <laughs> First things first, if you're a creative and you're a videographer, a photographer, anything like that, this is a film that you need to watch. It's by Morgan Cooper. Um, I don't know what he's based out of. I don't, I'm thinking Kansas City since that's what the film is based out of, but it's a dope piece of work. Like You got to check that out. So what I want to do is really just give you guys a couple of the the scenes that really stood out to me. There was a lot of scenes that really spoke to me. There was a lot of things that I've been through personally that I could really get where the character uh, was coming from. So I kind of wanted to share that real quick because it's a lot of like dope things, or a lot of things that all creatives, especially creative entrepreneurs have to go through with creating content. One of the first scenes that really stood out to me was the main character, Modi. He's the uh, videographer. Um, he's actually shooting a music video for a rap artist, right? And so their first interaction is they both pull up to the location where they're going to shoot the music video at. And then the Modi, the main character, says, hey, you got that bread for my deposit. He tries to say that a couple times and the artist just kind of flakes on him or just kind of ignores him. You know, we kind of talked about it last time, right? Uh, before we start shooting, can we take care of that deposit? Hey, baby, look. Hey, one second, bro. It's live. All right, bet. Yo, what's good, IG? It's your boy, Tez, a.k.a. Tezzy Pendergrass, a.k.a. Street God. The reason that stood out to me is because I've been there. I've been that creative or that videographer who says that, hey, there's a deposit. 
and then you kind of get jerked a little bit for your money. So I feel like, especially as creators is starting out, if you're not super aggressive and saying, hey, I'm not doing nothing until my pause is paid, and you try to, you know, go with the flow, you want to get jerked around like this. That's why that scene kind of stood out to me a lot. The next scene that kind of stood out is the main character, Modi. He's actually trying to, he's in between shots, and he's actually getting his uh, gimbal right. He actually had the Ronin M, which I have. He's trying to get that all together. And then another character, I forgot that character's name. He actually comes in and just really start asking a whole bunch of questions about uh, shooting videos and um, equipment and everything like that. Man, that looked like a photo camera. Nah, I'm... yes, you could use it for stills. I mean, I mostly use mine for video. Uh, it's a it's a mirrorless camera. Mirrorless? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mirrorless. So usually lightweight, compact. Honestly, it's a really cool investment, man. Hey, you, you ever heard of a, um, damn, what's the name of that joint? In this scene, they actually did it where the guy was genuinely, you know, interested in, you know, what Modi had going on. But once again, I've been in that position where I could be shooting something and just people just come up and just ask the most simplest or random questions or they try to relate to you, but it's like, yo, dude, we're in the middle of something right now. Like this has to wait. Sometimes you get people who are like genuinely interested and some people, sometimes you just get people who are nosy and they want to flex like, yo, I got a stabilizer too. I ain't got no camera, but I got a stabilizer or I shot with a red and like, but you don't do none of this. So that scene really stood out because like I said, once again, I really, I've been there where people will always come up to you trying to ask questions about what you do, how you do it. And they always ask, so are you really making money with this? Like, are you are you really making money? It's always interesting to be able to see how that goes with other people. Cause for some reason I thought that was just me who get these situations. All right, so the next scene that resonated with me a lot is the fight of, let me see how I can put this. It's the fight of wanting to do more with your creative expertise people wanting to pay you for one thing and you're not really wanting to do it so i know that might sound super confusing but what i mean by that is in his case he wanted to shoot things bigger than just music videos but that's what people were paying him for. And you can't turn it down because you need the money. So with me, I ran into that all the time where, and I'm actually just getting out of that where people wanted to pay me for, hey, come shoot my event. Hey, come shoot this video for $200. And I didn't want to do it. I wanted to do things more creative, more outside the box, more things that's over the top, more things that required a concept and maybe a slight budget. But the only thing people knew you for was shooting events or shooting you know music videos or whatever the case may be and like i said up until a couple months ago i used to have to take those projects because i needed money to pay my mortgage or i needed money to pay certain bills so when modi was sitting there at his computer and he got that text from um the cousin and he said hey i don't want to i'm i'm not i don't do that anymore <laughs> i've been there i was there a couple weeks ago when he said i don't do that but then the dude said hey i got a budget of 2000 you you shoot videos now and then Modi's like, yeah, I guess so. I've been in that position where you don't want to do something, but you need that bread. So that stood out to me like the most. Like I actually showed my wife that one particular scene and she's like, oh, that's what you got to deal with. I'm like, yeah, that's my life in a nutshell right there. So, so, all right. So the fourth scene that really stood out to me a lot was the part where he actually tries to go in and get a regular job at a, a real corporate company for shooting videos. And, you know, they seem real nice. They're talking to him about his experience, what he actually shoots and all that. And they pretty much are asking, you know, for his portfolio. And they're, like I said, a real corporate commercial company. But all of his work is like hood music videos, which they don't really show the music videos outside the one that they showed in the beginning of the film. But you could tell that all he shot is like these hood music videos. So, Michael, it says here that you didn't go to film school? Nah. Film school wasn't really an option for me. 
I, after I graduated high school, I picked up my first camera and just jumped right in. <laughs> How'd you learn? I taught myself. It's called YouTube University. <laughs> no. Self-starter. So, Michael, it says here that you have a lot of music video experience. <laughs> yeah, uh, quite a bit. <laughs> Cool. What kind of music? Betty Crocker whipping in the South White. Varies. And the reason this stood out to me is because, once again, I've been in that place where you're trying to present yourself to get bigger projects based off your portfolio, but the only thing in your portfolio is lower level projects. So people can't really see the type of work that you can do because the only thing that you're presenting to them is these lower level basic projects. Um, I ran into that a lot starting out, but not so much later in my career, only because I started to create my own opportunities. I started to reach out to people and like, hey, let me shoot this project for you for free. I get to do exactly how I want to do it. And then that's kind of how I started to, you know, grow my follow and grow my name because I was shooting the projects that I actually wanted to shoot. So a quick word of wisdom, shoot the projects that you really want to shoot, even if you have to do it for free. All right, and the fifth thing that stood out to me, now this one was crazy. And I 100% get this. 100 trillion, thousand, million, billion percent get it. It was a scene where he took the cousin up on his offer to shoot his music video only for the money, only for the money. And he ended up getting shot. So this resonated with me, not because I've gotten shot before. I've never even been in like a wild situation like that. But for me, the reason that stood out was because it put me in a mindset of the projects that you don't want to take on, that you do take on, almost always is going to be a problem. There's going to be some type of issue that you run into that make you think like, hmm, I shouldn't have took this project. I've run into that a million times. There's always a project that I say, this isn't really what I want to do. But in the back of my mind, be like, yo, you need that money. And so I end up taking it and then it being one of the worst projects that I've ever done. I'm just now starting to get out of that. But for a while, it's always been like that. My piece of advice for that is like, trust your gut, trust your instincts. If it's a project that you don't want to do, don't do it. Or if you feel in your gut, it's something that you don't want your name attached to. Even if the money's looking good, and I know sometimes that money be looking great, but don't do it, yeah. So that's it. That is my review. That is my synopsis. That's my opinion on the movie You Shoot Videos. Once again, it's a great film. It was shot great. Shout out to uh, Morgan Cooper and his whole team that put this together. It's just a wonderful piece of art that if you shoot videos, you need to watch You Shoot Videos. So I'm going to actually include the link to it below. It's on Vimeo. I don't think it's on YouTube anywhere, but whenever you get 45 minutes, go and check this out. It's a great watch. Whew. So that's it. So this is Shot Harris. Other of society, and uh, I need to find a dope way to exit out of these. I gotta find something, yeah, something, I just gotta do something.